Thank you for tuning in today. This is our very first broadcast of our lunchtime daily devotionals. This is Pastor Jamie Wyatt, uh, Middleburg Church of God. For those who may not be a part of the church that may be listening in, um, if you are listening in, part of the church, received a text message from me today or what have you, or introduced to it yesterday during service, uh, just leave a comment there in the chat section if you're able to, or on the link that's been shared to our church Facebook page. Or if you have my number, send me a text later on this afternoon after the broadcast uh, just to let me know that you have been listening in. I want to get a feel of how um, popular, I guess you could say this would be, how many will be listening in to see if there's a need to continue it on a daily basis. But at least go through this study over the next several days. And uh, we're going to start off uh, these daily, I call them devotions, they're going to be longer than devotionals, uh, podcast, I guess, uh, sermonettes, uh, maybe full-fledged lessons, I'm not sure, but uh, you can tune in live or all of these broadcasts will be archived uh, on Spreaker and you can come back and listen to them later if I get too long and you got to get back to work or what have you. But let's open with prayer today and then we'll get right into our very uh, first um, devotional, our intro to this study that we're going to be doing over the next several days. Father, I love you. Thank you and praise you for an opportunity and a platform to minister. And just ask you to add your anointing unto your servant, unto your word, unto the listener, and we may receive guidance and strength from your holy word. And we just praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What I felt led to start off with on these devotionals is a study that we have done before at our church on the fruit of the Spirit. And um, I've just kind of taken a different perspective as I got into that study and began to look at these verses and begin to study out uh, the, the depths of it. And that's what I want to try to uh, lay out in this introduction. As we get ready, we will go through each one of these virtues listed in the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Uh, but today I, I want to just open up with an intro to show you and to share with you my perspective on what I feel uh, that these verses are saying and what leads into uh, these verses. So we read first here Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law. We're going to be looking closely at these two verses over the next several days, and we will break down each one of those. But as we get into this into this intro today, I want us to, to think about some things. We often uh, see the word fruit here in the text, and I want you to notice that as you look there in the text, uh, that it is singular. So we look at that, and then we list several virtues, and so many people have been guilty of saying the fruits of the Spirit, but it's all one fruit, it all uh, combined together. And But as we see that word fruit there in the text, often I've done this and many do this, and it may be uh, the appropriate viewpoint of it. But from my studying and researching and looking, I kind of see it from a different perspective. Uh, we look at it as a fruit bowl, as apples, bananas, oranges, grapes, and and all of those types of fruit. We think of a fruit bowl. Even uh, when I did the study, I had the image up on the screen of all the different fruits that uh, that exist. And we begin to study, and it, it gives us that image. But when we think about that, we... Uh, tend to look more towards the fruit bowl. But I, I believe as I've studied this and as I, as I look at it and as I'm going to share it from this perspective through this lens over the next several days, I believe that we need to look at it not as the fruit of the bloom, not as the fruit of the root, but by the fruit of the womb uh, and by what comes that fruit that takes place during the birth of uh, of a child or uh, that takes place there in in that system and that side of nature uh, and we we're looking at that perspective of what I've seen here and what I'm understanding as I look at this and study this we know that Jesus was the fruit of Mary's womb and how did Jesus come about he was not uh, uh from Joseph's seed but he came uh 
the writer said that we are born again of an incorruptible seed. And we know that Joseph would have been a corruptible seed because he's man and man is flawed. But we know as we study the word of God that uh, the Holy Ghost was uh, came upon and overshadowed Mary and conceived inside of her through that virgin birth uh, was Jesus. So he was the fruit of Mary's womb, but he was the conception of the Holy Ghost bringing forth that product. Uh, Let's read those verses where this is brought about in Scripture, uh, very familiar in the Christmas season that we just came through, and it's found in Luke chapter 1, uh, beginning with verse 26. And it said, In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. So we find here that The angel said in verse 31, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest. Lord shall be God unto him, the the throne of his father David, and he shall reign. And Mary questioned this in verse 34. How shall this be, seeing I know no man? And the angel answered and said, This will be because the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. So Jesus is a fruit of the Holy Ghost of Mary's womb, and he is brought forth, and he talks about the great things that will be accomplished through the fruit of Mary's womb, uh, through uh, this this uh, that's going to grow and be conceived from her, from inside of her. And, and we find that as we begin to, to move forward in the life of Jesus, we see that he did just that. Uh, we see as he lived out his life uh, here in the flesh, he manifested uh, uh, the fruit of the Spirit that Paul is writing about here to the Galatians uh, in Galatians chapter 5. But also remember that Paul wrote to the Galatians that uh, it's no longer I that live, but Christ. Christ that lives in me, Christ that has been birthed and and conceived, and that spirit uh, that has been conceived inside of us because he was the firstborn of a new creation, uh, and we too have been born again of that and conceived inside of us, just like the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and brought forth in her physical womb. Uh, Jesus, uh, that child that was born on that first Christmas morning, uh, that Savior of the world. Uh, when we were born again, something similar to that took place uh, in our spiritual life. There was something uh, that was conceived inside of us. There was a, a, a new seed, not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed uh, that came from the Holy Ghost uh, and was brought there uh, and known, known to us. And what Paul shares here, it be known to us uh, that brought forth a product uh, that will bring forth a production uh, which is called the fruit of the spirit uh, so so as we enter into this study we're we're talking more than about bananas and oranges and apples and tasty things we're talking about something that took place so we see this in Jesus' life uh, what Paul is sharing here in our text uh, when we have been overshadowed by the holy ghost we too will manifest the fruit 
of the Spirit. As you look and uh, as you study the amplified uh, view of this verse in Galatians 5.22, it reads like this, but the fruit of the Spirit, and it says this, the result of His presence within us. So as we're studying this and looking at this over the next several days, when I say, but the fruit of the Spirit is, what we're saying there is the result of His presence within us. This is what's going to happen as a result of the presence of God that is within us. And we'll begin to go through each one of those virtues that takes place in that that is accumulated in the fruit of the Spirit or as a result of His presence within us. There's something that's going to happen in the Christian life, in that born-again believer's life, that's going to produce as a result of His presence within us. I can't emphasize that enough as we get started on this. So when I say, but the, the fruit of the Spirit, remember those words. Write that down. Mark it in your heart. It's, this is a result of, the pre, of His presence within us. Wesley stated it this way. He says, there's not natural traits of the human personality. He's talking about this, these, the fruit of the Spirit. These are not natural traits of the human personality, but are the result of the Spirit's coming upon those who acknowledge Christ as Lord and Savior. The Spirit testifies to them that they are the children of God. The immediate result of this testimony is the fruit of of the Spirit. And without the testimony itself cannot continue. So what he is saying there is the Spirit testifies of them that they're the children and the immediate result of the testimony is the result of His presence within us. And knowing that without these test, these uh, re- these results coming forth out of us, uh, the testimony is not there. The testimony cannot continue. There is no nothing in us now naturally that can bring forth uh, these results or this fruit of the Spirit. So over the next several days, to, today will probably be the shortest of my devotionals uh, because I just kind of wanted to lay a foundation and a groundwork to let you to let you know where we're going, and I'll probably break it up into bite-sized pieces uh, of trying to keep these broadcasts around uh, 20 minutes or so. So we may talk about one particular virtue, like the first one, love. We may cover that over two, maybe three days, and, and we'll just take it that way and be a, a lot of to be continued as we get through these series. And, and you can go back and listen to old broadcasts if need be to be able to catch up and to stay called up. And I, and I hope it's been beneficial to you. So over these next several days, we're going to do that. And I'm going to share with you each one of these manifestations of the Spirit and how the fruit of the Spirit brings each one of them to fruition in our lives. So, so looking back at this foundation, what we're looking at here is Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. We don't want to think of a fruit bowl. We don't want to think of the fruit of the bloom, but we want to think of the fruit of the womb. And we look back at that and we get that from the Holy Ghost overshadowing Mary and being an conceived in her womb was Jesus who changed the world. He lived out his life here in the flesh and he manifested that fruit of the Spirit. And then we, as we take an amplified look at Galatians 5.22, the first part of the verse, what we're saying there when we say the fruit of the Spirit is a result of of His presence within us. So the results of His presence within us, according to Wesley, is a result of the test. It's an immediate result of the testimony of what is coming forth out of us as believers that we do not possess within the natural. We may be able to speak these words and 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 profess these words and attach emotions to these words on the natural side, but we cannot bring forth the testimony, and that testimony cannot continue of these virtues because they come as a product of being born again. They come as a product, uh, as a result uh, of the Spirit of God within us. Uh, And so we're going to unfold that and talk about that over the next several days. And I invite you to come back tomorrow 
Tune in here again at this time at 1230 tomorrow and uh, the next few days. Um, I, I'm going to try to keep it right around 20 minutes, really, I believe, even with my intro song there. Try to keep it 15, 20 minutes because this is a, a lunchtime broadcast and I want people to be able to listen in on their lunch break while they're eating their sandwich or what have you and to try to keep it that way and not try to make it a, a bunch of sermons and just try to help us to, to learn and grow together. So thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for uh, listening in. I hope it's been beneficial already and looking forward to what is going to unfold in our hearts and our minds over these next several days as we continue this study uh, on the fruit of the Spirit and where we go from here. We'll follow God's leading uh, if we'll just go through this and that'll be it or if we'll continue on with this broadcast. Like I said, leave me a message in the chat box or on Facebook where the link is shared on our Facebook page. Leave a comment there or send me a text later today to let me know uh, that you listened in. And uh, we want to get the word out and want to share the word of God with our congregation, friends, family, and loved ones. Just keep us uplifted in these uncertain times in which we're living in. Pray that everyone is well and pray that you have a wonderful Monday afternoon. And I uh, want to say God bless you and want to say a prayer for you as we go. And uh, just let God be with you throughout the day. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity that we've had to come together today to, to bring forth an opportunity to get into your word and to study the word of God together. And as we just break down these two verses over the next several days, I pray for your anointing to be upon us to do so. I pray, God, that you'd bless the listener, bless their home, bless their family, bring healing, bring strength, supply their every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Keep your hand upon us. Help us to prosper and be in good health as our souls prosper. And we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful Monday afternoon. I love you and God bless you.